in God. Let's listen attentively as we go into the service already in progress. To our friends that are in radio land and uh, those that are listening on the web and to all the saints of God and our loved ones that have gathered in this place of excellence, God's place this morning, Bible Way Healing Assembly. Let me tell you, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. No one has to suffer and others are being healed and nobody has to die before that time because life can't be beautiful. Praise God. Take Jesus for your partner. He makes all of your plans so much larger. It is a great, great, great blessing to be alive and to be able to behold each other's face. And also the most important is to give God praise and glory for being our God, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. We certainly do thank the Lord for those who are partnering with Bible Way Healing Assembly. Amen. In this ministry, we thank the Lord for you. We thank the Lord for every well-wisher I want you to know that we have received many of your letters and have certainly prayed for you concerning those uh, things that you ask us to pray about. It is also now time that we pray. I spoke with a lady just yesterday who told me how I prayed for when I was praying on the radio, how she reached over and touched the radio, as I said, how God healed her. And she has been healed ever since. God is a healer. And I trust you know that there's a healer in the house right now. He's healing all the time. So when a word is spoken, let always know, even if I'm talking to an individual, that word could be your word if you will put it in to you. It is God's time to heal and deliver, heal cancers and tumors and Glory to God. <clears throat> Heal those diseases that have you crippled. It, 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 this is the day that God's going to do some great things. Amen. Somebody ought to grab a hold to that right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Babies are being healed right now. That baby that is very, very sick and losing weight. is going to begin to eat. And God is healing it right now. In the most shut up. God's healing marriages right now. Restoring families, members together. In the name of Jesus, you grab a hold of that. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your people, those that have those cell phones, you know what to be doing. Amen. Father, as we pray right now, take an authority by the power of God. Let your blood cover, let your healing virtue flow. We thank you for those that are listening by radio. Thank you for those that are listening right now on those cell phones. Thank you for those that are in this audience, that as they lift their hands or put their hands on or near where they're hurt, where that disease is, as they reach over and touch the radio and believe God is a point of contact, we speak healing and deliverance to them in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, let your blood cover them right now in Jesus' name. I come against every sickness, every disease. I come against confusion. Glory to God. I come against unforgiveness in the name of Jesus, even in the families, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you for healing physically, emotionally, spiritually, and in every way. Thank you for total healing and the entire being, the entire man and woman lined up with the word of God. Every aspect of that person line up with God's word in the name of Jesus. Now Jesus we thank you for healing that they will walk in it that they will confess your word and they will give you the glory for healing their bodies in Jesus name put your hands together and thank God Amen. Thank him thank him, thank him, thank him nothing is automatic. Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good Take your Bibles in your hand. Let's say together, this is my Bible. This is the word of God. God and his word are one. God is everything that my Bible said that he is. God can do everything that my Bible said he can do. I am everything that my Bible said that I am. I can have everything that my Bible said that I can have. 
I can do everything the Bible said I can do. I come to hear the word of God and I declare that my mind is alert and prepared to receive the infallible word of God. Because of the word of God, I will never be the same again, not ever, not ever, not ever. I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered. Come on, I'm out of debt, on my knees are bad, I'm walking in divine health, wholeness and holiness, and I will not allow Satan to rob me of what God has given me. Somebody give God a shout and tell somebody, tell somebody what that is. In your Bibles, in the book of St. Luke, chapter 8, 14, chapter 14 of the book of Luke. Hallelujah. Jesus. Beginning with verse 25, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross or her cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The main text. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying this man or this woman began to build and was not able to finish it. If you look with me really quick in the book of Genesis, that is in chapter 39, first book in the Bible, 39, and look at verses Two through five, and the Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. God made everything that he did successful. He was a success. Joseph found grace in the sight. And he served him. Remember the word served. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. He was appreciated. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Remember that. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Father, we thank you for your word. The subject that I have chosen today is willingly serving God with dignity and delight. Willingly serving God with dignity and delight. For after one receives the Holy Ghost, there is a commission upon your individual life to be a witness for Jesus for life and Luke is saying to us when you receive the Holy Ghost speak in tongues 
that Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to be confronted with things, but count the cost. As you go down in your seat, tell somebody, let's count the cost. Today, the text conveys the message that we must deliberately and carefully consider the ability to complete what God is giving us. A deliberate, careful consideration of the ability to get it done has to be understood. Uh, you, you, following Jesus without the understanding of what it cost can sometimes cause us to blunder. So deliberately and carefully consider what it costs to complete this to Jesus come of following Christ without having duly considered what is involved in disciple let everybody say discipleship consider what self denunciation must be exemplified the purpose for this illustration in Luke is, or seemed to be to me, to enforce the necessity of earnestness and deliberation in receiving the Holy Ghost and becoming witnesses for Jesus and discharging the obligation, somebody say obligation, of a Holy Ghost filled life. The words are count the cost, which may be forsaking the interests that you have, the affection, some possessions in this present life. And he records the words of Jesus. That we, after receiving the Holy Spirit, said the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The salt is not to lose its savor, its taste. What does that mean, Dr. Nelson? It means that your life is not to lose its characteristics and its properties. Because if so, then, you lose the taste solitary the, the taste you know when salt loses its taste it's not good for seasoning so the Lord is saying don't lose your influence it means have a good, healthy, sound, wholesome, beneficial, honorable influence because when salt is exposed to air, water, the ground, it's tasteless and it's useless. Count the cost and commit to serving with dignity and delight. The spirit of serving, servanthood, makes the difference between duty and desire. You know, uh, we come to church a lot of times because we feel it's our duty. I got to be there because I got to do it. Don't the people going to think this and people going to think that and the pastor going to think this? But God is talking about doing it because you desire to be used of me. Do it because you desire to carry out your saltiness that I put on the inside. See, willingness we want to do. 
Servanthood becomes a delight when you are close to Jesus and his desires become your desire. So it really doesn't matter if the other five people that's in the prayer group don't come. I'm still going to pray. I can't get much help in this place already. It doesn't matter if they, I don't want to see all the choir members, but if all of them don't come and I'm the only one singing some prayer, I'm going to be there. It is only that then that doing the will of God ceases to be a duty. And although the Lord called us to be, sometimes we have heaviness, heavy burdens. We have problems. Anybody in here got heavy burdens other than me? But God makes it lighter to carry out. When you serve because it's the light to serve, not because it's a duty. The attitude of a servant determines the atmosphere of a palace. We want to live. God wants us to live so that when people want to get saved, they don't have to sift through our muck and our stuff and our stiffness and our stuffiness and our lordship. Sometimes people won't even get saved because we act like lords instead of servants. I pretty like preaching it here today. The attitude of service determines the atmosphere of a palace. We had the opportunity to visit the palace of the king in Egypt. We were, uh, it was during the time of that uh, war, uh, Six Day War, and um, we uh, had flown from the United States to England. And uh, then uh, the L, uh, the, uh, the airline from Israel was not allowed to come cross over Egypt. And so they sent Swiss Air to pick us up and took us into Egypt. And when we got there, they had to take care of the, 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 the uh, United States citizens. So they took us to the palace. Well, that was the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. We had the opportunity to visit that place. And the beauty of the palace was... Um, it was by it was the beauty of the palace was not equal to the beauty of the servants that served in the palace. That's what I want to say. Before we saw the dignitaries, amen, our first impression had already been formed by the attitude of the servants. The same is true for people who come to our churches expecting to meet the master of the house. The critical difference rests on our behavior, whether we serve Jesus displaying reluctance or are we willingly serving God with dignity and delight. Dignity and servanthood is not always easy to obtain. Amen. You got to be transparent. And so you got to make up in your mind, it's not me, but it's Jesus. Amen. I must decrease that the Lord must increase. You and I determine the atmosphere of God's house by the way we serve others. By the way, amen, that we serve willingly, willingly with delight and desire. When you accept the full terms of godly servitude, it can cost you. Servants in biblical times had little or no clothing on. Sometimes, according to history, amen, it wasn't uncommon for servants to be, amen, uh, half-dressed, half-unclothed. And I tell you, it's always easy to practice, amen, it is easier to, to, to talk it than to practice it. Now, earlier this year, March the 1st to be exact, um, I had an experience of joy, the joy of going to the hospital for medical tests. And afterward, waiting in the emergency room while wearing one of those too short, too little, open in the back or open in the front, wherever you want to put the opening. Amen. You sit up there with part of you in and part of you out. It ain't easy to describe the experience that I went to. Come on, somebody. Amen. It made everybody that came in the emergency room on equal ground. All of us had them little short gowns on and split in the back, and we were trying to hide ourselves. It's something, but it is not impossible 
to practice dignity while living in humility. I was still a saved woman. Come on, somebody. Trying to cover myself while I had that stuff on. I can't get myself in this house. When we realize that in Christ, we are all servants. It will be easier to develop a lasting relationship between all of us. Jesus, our Savior, amen, did in a state of nakedness hang on that tree. The Bible said he died in divine dignity. In the sight of everybody that passed by, Jesus was naked. Now, I know they have those claws, our line claws, whatever you call them, to cover their bodies. But that was not so when Jesus was hanging on the tree. Amen. It, listen, understand that we must die to the flesh. We must also die with dignity to the flesh. It means that a manner of uh, indicative of self-respect, nobility, Amen. Elevation of character, worthiness, respect, elevated in rank, honor, stately. We God's servants for, uh, are to serve God with dignity. Come on, somebody. And desire. Servanthood forces us to continuously die to ourselves, to our pride, to our own wishes, to our own agendas. The cross of Christ has been delivered to our doorsteps. I say the cross of Christ has been delivered to our doorstep. You heard the text this morning said, amen, that we are to take up our cross and follow the Lord. Whoever told you that we are not supposed to have crosses, crosses are heavy. Crosses cause you, amen, to bend over. Crosses hurt. Glory to God. But the summons of, uh, you understand that the cross is to our come to our doorstep. The summons now of the court is served on a daily basis. Flesh don't like this because sometimes the nakedness of our transparency that servanthood require can be embarrassing to us. The same way we stand or sit in front of a photographer although we are fully dressed we still suck in our stomachs. We still lift our chest, stick out our chest and lift our chin. Why we do that? Amen. Because we hope to look better. I can't get much help in here. Amen. Look at somebody and say, oh my God. Amen. 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 There's no way that we can serve God and other people with our bellies all sucked in. <laughs> we got to let it out and let people see our, well, if you got a deformity, let them see it. I can't get myself in here. Amen. Just be willing to obey the call of Jesus. Amen. To serve in hood. Stop trying to hide your deformities. Just because people expect you to be a certain way. You are who you are. Fat stomach, fat back, tall, short, large head, small head, long neck, short neck. We're all God's children. Our calling is to servanthood. Our calling is to help. Our calling is to help. Our calling is to be a caretaker, to help take care of the ministry to the next level. You have seen the power of God move, many saints. Amen. Don't serve the church just for what you can get out of it. Serve it for what you can put in it. I can't get myself in here. Somebody ought to give God some praise in this house. Somebody ought to give him some praise in this house. Saints don't serve. In a way where if I don't get nothing, I don't give nothing. And we have to learn to serve beyond the four walls of our church. We got to learn to serve on the street. I know y'all didn't have it. We got to learn to serve in jails. Every member of the church ought to have something to do. 
You ought to be on something. You can teach children. You can help boys. You can help girls. All these men in here, you can help boys. You can teach a class. Amen. You can help with the roof. You can help in the back. You can do something. Every one of us have to be able to take the church, amen, out to the street, to the nursing home. Because there is a concept of those who serve in ministry as boring. People said, I don't want to be no missionary. Because it's dull. It's for all little ladies that have a bun and a little white dress. Well, for your information, I think it looks nice for us to be in white dresses. Amen. A missionary, Paul was a missionary, and I never see in the Bible where he wore a dress. But that stereotype isn't biblical at all. How many know that? It's not true, and it's unfair to think that the only missionaries are women with white dresses on and a bun in the back of his head. God has many gifted, motivated servants today, as he did on yesterday. The Bible, look at somebody say, take the Bible for it. Take the Bible word for it. The Bible defines, defines godly service as a desire and a delight. I don't know about you, but it's a delight to work with, for God. I don't know about you, of all the heartaches I've had, it's a blessing for me to be doing what I'm doing right now. The Bible said that Ruth, Ruth delight, was delighted to serve Naomi. The Bible said Joseph was delighted, amen, to serve in Potiphar's house. Bible said Elijah was desert, delighted to serve Elijah. And you know that Timothy was delighted to serve under Paul. Jesus was delighted to serve his disciples. As all of these considered now, it is an honor to be a servant. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I want to be a servant. And that's if you want to be one. We too are to consider it an honor to serve. Servanthood, Sister Jackson, should not be something that we do, but it should be who we are. Tell your neighbor, servanthood should not be something we do, but servanthood should be something that we are. Amen. Luke 14 tells us Jesus commanded us to count the cost. Understand he is already speaking about the total, all our total commitment, his requirement when he gets saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, he expects us to obey and follow him by faith. You may not love the song they're singing, but follow by faith. You may not appreciate the time we set service, but follow by faith. Jesus gives us the biblical aspect of servanthood. Count the cost by giving your entire life. Count the call. You are all about Jesus. You are all about Jesus. Amen. God forbid that we go to work and we can't come to church. I believe I'm going to picture it like the Bible said. I don't feel like it. I need some more rest. Well, find some other time. Come on, somebody. God's going to bless you. You remember the story of Mephib Mephibosheth? Amen. That, 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 don't try to hide your deformities anymore. Amen. Just ask God to help you to overcome your temple. I can't get myself. Overcome your weakness. O overcome your tiredness. Can somebody give God some praise in here? You're transformed into an anointed servant of God. And when we receive the Holy Ghost, our DNA is changed by the Holy Ghost. The life of Joseph provides one of the most complete pictures of biblical godly servanthood that I've ever read and I've ever studied. It's true that his father gave him a multicolor coat. He was thrown, he was thrown in, the, in the pit by his brothers. It is true, true that he had an awesome dream. It is also true that he was young and didn't understand that telling his dream to his brothers would make them jealous. It is also true that he became an interpreter of great dreams. He did not understand his youth. He didn't understand a man clearly until he became a mature young man. What he clearly came to understand later on from the pit he graduated to a position of a ruler. From a slave, come on somebody, he graduated to the second highest office in his country. God has his eyes on you. He called you to be a servant because he wants to bless you. We thank you for listening to Living by Faith broadcast today. 
If you would like this message in its entirety, write to Dr. Eula M. Nelson Ministries, Post Office Box 39, Henrietta, New York, 14467, or you can call 321-0090. Join Dr. Nelson in service this week. Sunday morning worship begins at 11 a.m., and miracle and deliverance services are held Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. All services are held here at the Bible Way Healing Assembly, 4831 West Henrietta Road in Henrietta, New York. For more information or transportation, please call 321-0090. And don't forget to write to Dr. Nelson this week. Let us rejoice with you about the great things God has done for your life. When writing, consider sending a love gift to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This ministry is supported by Dr. Eula M. Nelson Ministries and you, our listening partners. You may send all U.S. mail to E.M. Nelson Ministries, Post Office Box 39, Henrietta, New York, 14467. Until next week, friends, remember the words of Jesus in the gospel according to St. Mark 11 and 22. Have faith in God. 1039 WTKX Rochester.